Earlier this week, the Justice Department released a statement sharply criticizing comments made by EFF leader Julius Malema when he claimed that the magistrate hearing his case had interrupted her judgment to receive phone calls from Pravin Gordon, the president, and the head of the NPA, Shamila Batohi. He's given no evidence for his claims. He also said, again without evidence, that it was a sponsored judgment against him. Professor Pierre de Foss is, as you know, an expert on constitutional law at UCT. Professor, good afternoon to you. You suggested Julius Malema may in fact have opened him up to himself up to criminal charges. What kind of charges could he face for saying this? Well, there is in our law the a crime of a scandalizing the court, which is quite an old-fashioned uh, phrase, uh, which is part of, it's a kind of contempt of court. So normally we know contempt of court is normally if there's a court order you refuse or do not obey the court order, then that's one kind of contempt of court. The other one is scandalizing the court, where you make statements that will tend to or is intended to bring the administration of justice into contempt. In other words, you make statements that, uh, that attacks the legitimacy of the, the legal process, of the legal system. Um, but our constitutional court has said that should be narrowly interpreted, so it's only in the clearest of cases where, um, where it should amount to a crime. So if you criticize, say, the judge or the magistrate, you say they're incompetent, this or that, that would not be a case of scandalizing the court. But this is different because there is a claim made, quite a specific factual claim that is obviously not true, and that suggests that the magistrate is dishonest, corrupt, that she writes the judgment, taking instructions from other people. That seems to go beyond the kind of political speech uh, and criticism of the courts that, that is and should be allowed in our system because that is the way, one of the ways in which the courts are held accountable uh, for the judgments they make and presiding officers are held accountable for how they act in court. Who would lay those charges? I mean, it would be quite complicated, I would imagine, for the magistrate to lodge them. No, the state um, is, uh, is the one who will have to prosecute this. They, there's been a few cases in, uh, in our law over the last 15 years where people have been prosecuted. Some, the, the, the magistrate or judge can, of course, suggest or refer the matter to the NPA, but they will have to decide, and then they will have to prosecute, um, or, of course, there can also be a private prosecution. But um, in most cases, in the cases that I have managed to find, it has always been the state that prosecute uh, an individual person who has made really scurrilous claims that are obviously false against uh, presiding officers or against this, the, the way the trial is run or whatever. Um, the issue here is, insofar as I know, Malema's given no evidence whatsoever about what he said. I mean, he, he says literally the president was phoning a magistrate during her judgment. I mean, his problem would be that he has no evidence. If he was cross-examined, he would be asked, on what do you base this? Yes, so, so obviously they, before we even get to the trial, there is an uh, ethical or uh, uh, issue, and that is that one shouldn't criticize judges or judgments if, without providing any justification or reason. So when Mr. Malema also says the judge is racist, um, if he backed that up with something, we don't have to agree with it, but that would be perfectly fine, even if his uh, justification is maybe not uh, very plausible. But this is, that's why I'm saying this is such a clear-cut case, because this clearly it's preposterous. Clearly, the magistrate didn't phone Shamila Batoye and Pravin Gordon and the president, and then uh, uh, got dictation from them and wrote this uh, captured uh, judgment. So that goes quite further, and in the context of a political rally outside the courtroom, Clearly, the intention is to discredit the magistrate, to discredit the criminal trial, and in the event that there is a guilty verdict, uh, to try and discredit the outcome of the trial, which I think is punishable in terms of uh, that particular uh, legal rule. We don't see many cases where someone is actually charged for something they said. Uh, it has happened, mm. but there are very few of them. Um, the obvious mm. defense would be his right to freedom of speech. Yes, so and that we see the same thing happening in the U.S. with Donald Trump, of course. They, uh, in there, there's also a similar 
criminal offence, but it is very restricted. You have to show actually that the statement did have a result of uh, of bringing the whole system into disrepute. Here, it's just a reasonable person would think think that it is it it is it could happen that way. Um, but for that re that is the why the Constitutional Court in a judgment in 2001, I think, said that. It, it, it would be very seldom that words would uh, amount to scandalizing the court because freedom of expression, because somebody like Mr. Malema, it should be perfectly acceptable uh, for him to criticize uh, judges, criticize magistrates, as it is for the rest of us. Um, and it's part of political speech. So if Mr. Mandela says the le whole legal system is racist or uh, this particular judge is racist, one could say this is a politician. It's part of his right to do that. If we stop that, we're stopping political speech. But, of course, that's different from making <laughs> the kind of claims mm -hmm. that then uh, went on to make. Professor Pierre de Foss, the constitutional law expert, thank you very much indeed.